Hi, welcome to Seclair. I'm Zaida Chaudhry, MD, and I'm the Director of Education at Seclair. And today we are talking about the integrative medicine for mental health. Now, if we put ourselves in the middle and uh, see our emotional health, see our physical health, see our mental health, see the spirituality aspects, and social health and environmental health. So it's a holistic approach. It is not just that we give a medication to the patient and expect that they will heal. So it's a combination. It is a combination of conventional medicine and integrative approach. Emotional aspects are very important, dealing with the emotional aspect and then educating patients how to deal with the stresses is a very important component for the integrative approach. In Axiclair, we are trained in DBT, which is dialectical based therapies, which teaches our patients how to cope with the stresses and the behavior issues. So it becomes like a predictive, personalized, preventive, and participatory care. So if we see an approach, which uh, when I went for a conference actually, and I heard one of the doctors, which is Dr. Hughes, he's a researcher, James Green, blood MD, and I like the approach, which is called the zebra approach. In zebra approach, it's the zebra approach. With T, we have to take care of yourself, we take care of our hormones, and we exclude uh, the things which are not good for us, for example, when we are talking about gluten-free diet, gluten-free diet is if we have symptoms, symptoms which cannot be actually um, uh, treated by medications. So we can exclude certain diets, maybe gluten-free diet to see that is helpful. So exclusion is very important. Then uh, certain metals, zinc, minerals, essential fatty acids. Um, why essential fatty acids? Because these are important com components for uh, our cell linings. Exercise and energy, these are the parts of our life which are uh, very healthy living. And vitamins, uh, and other vitamins, vitamin B, resto restoration, and amino acid and protein. Amino acids are very important because many of the neurotransmitters in, in our brain are precursors of these amino acids. So if we see the problems like depression, depression is one of the most serious problems which we have. Health problems in the world today, major depression accounts for about second longest number of days lost to disability in the US. Approximately 15% of the adult will experience severe depression, depressed mood during their lifetime. And approximately 15% of these adults will commit suicide. So suicide is third leading cause of death in youth among 15 to 24 years of age. So what we do actually in the conventional medicine is diagnosis and treatment. So general medical treatment, we see the symptoms, we measure the physiology, and entire physiology treatments measure physiology and symptoms. When we see the psychiatric treatment, the same symptoms, we see the symptoms, we give anti-symptom treatment, and then how we follow the progress is to measure the symptoms. And polypharmacy. Tons of medication are given, given to the patients. SSRIs are more common. There are tons of relapse. Uh, there are many times, 20% of these uh, cases who are taking these medications have incapacitated or committed suicide. 66% are left with the residual symptoms. So industry of psychiatry is huge. And then the question is, if psychoactive drugs are useless, why are they so widely prescribed by psychiatrists and regarded by the public and professions as something okay to, as a wonder drugs? And how much longer we continue to complain? And that is where comes the role of integrative medication. Integrative medicine, in fact. So, um, in spite of so many side effects which face these things um, with conventional medications, if we see the side effects of antidepressant, their emotional numbness, their sexual dysfunction is one of the very uh, important side effects which we really don't um, pay attention to 
and it is very important for the healthy living. 62% um, of the patients reported sexual difficulty while they are on antidepressant medications. So um, many smiles people are different. Two people are different and their complaints are the same. But when we are doing the treatments, the treatment uh, could be very different because their appearance has been totally different. So then we see that if we are going to treat every patient the same way or are we going to, uh, to add more to an understanding of which for me, gene versus epigenetic. So in that case, nutrition, sensory experiences, learning, stress, social interactions are very important. So genetic is uh, uh, the biological liability, but it is not our destiny. Said psychotropic medications um, affect level of neurotransmitters in the brain, and most of the neurotransmitter, I, as I was talking about amino acids, why these are important, they are precursor of the substance which are from the died. So that's very important when we talk about integrative approaches. That's very important. If we are lacking these amino acids, we are lacking these precursors, then just the medication will not help. So important uh, point to remember is pay attention to our nutrition and take all these precursor substances from our diet. Neurotransmitters, deficiency or dysfunction, how it happens is gene when we talk about two different people having the same symptoms, and then they are treated differently because the genetic component makeup is different. The stress, inflammation plays a tremendous role, neurotoxin, and diet and nutrition and how they are absorbed. So then comes the role of micro, macronutrients um, like lipids, cholesterol, proteins, amino acids, and carbohydrates. Uh, and then making sure that we are getting all these components in our diet um, to the optimum. So why sometimes amino acids are low? Because we are taking low protein intake. We are insufficient in hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes and antacid and stress. Antacid means taking antacids as a medication and stress. So amino acid levels become low. Uh, and then if we go on jumping to different things, we see amino acid, and I can, I can see the importance of then gastric acid among the macronutrients when we are talking about the gastric acid, which is hydrochloric acid, triggers entire di digestive cascade, and it is very important that we have a good health of our gut system. So when we see how serotonin is produced, serotonin is a neurotransmitter, which is called a happy neurotransmitter because it gives a positive mood, relaxation, and calming effect. And uh, healthy eating behavior is, affected, is affecting this neurotransmitter because L-tryptophan, which one of the amino acids, is a precursor and goes through the steps in which we need folate, we need amino acids, we need all of these zinc, vitamin B6, all of these to convert L-tryptophan to serotonin. So if we go through how these um, serotonin is, uh, is uh, made as a neurotransmitter, we go back to see what, is the what it is required. So increasing tryptophan in the diet will increase the serotonin in the brain. Decreasing the tryptophan diet will decrease the serotonin in the brain. 95% of the serotonin in the human body is produced in the intestinal tract and approximately 5% is produced in the brain. So the serotonin produced in the intestinal tract is unavailable to the brain because serotonin cannot pass through the blood-brain barrier. So L-tryptophan also does not easily pass through the blood-brain barrier and requires a carrier protein to ferry it into the brain. So Tryptophan is converted to its metabolite 5-hydroxy tryptophan, which is then converted to serotonin. So niacin, iron, folic acid, as I said, and this is what I'm repeating, are required for L-tryptophan to be converted into 5-HTP. So this is the small uh, details of um, the integrative uh, approach, meaning understanding of the fact that if we are taking antidepressant, just antidepressant will not help. And then the module which we introduce at Seclair is 
nutrition in addition to uh, medication, group approaches in which we teach our patients um, dialectical-based therapy, coping skills, training them how to have the behavior modifications and dealing with the stresses, and spirituality. Spirituality is a very important component of the integrative approach um, and exercise, um, yoga, a lot of other things which are very healthy for us. And then these things do not have side effects. So in 10, 15 minutes, I cannot go through the whole details of what is important for us and what we need to do in addition to the medication. But in 15 minutes, at least I can give you a small brief and I hope it helps and we can continue to educate our communities regarding the effect of healthy living. Thank you so much and I hope it helped you. See you again.